So whenever you are ready, can you explain what this is? Yeah. So <laughs> we decided to build a like self-monitoring hydroponic system that one could have in their house to grow fresh ingredients. Um, and if you're busy, it like monitors everything for you, so you don't have to actually worry about you know maintaining it. All you do is have to, like put things in and wait for them to grow. Um, so we have. An ultrasonic sensor here to detect water level. It's here? Yep, right okay. there in the middle. So it can detect where the water is within this uh, container. And if, the, uh, if it detects that the water level is too low, um, we turn on this pump, which is submerged in a tank of water. Uh, and you can add nutrients to it for your hydroponic system, but it'll pump water into here until the ultrasonic detects that it's reached the proper level. Okay. Um, here we have a temperature sensor which goes in the water so it can detect the temperature of the water okay and then from there um, it can control these fans which if it detects that it's too hot and needs to cool down uh, the fans will turn on and then below here there are a couple heating pads yes so if it detects sure. the water is too cold it turns on the heating pads heating up the water and uh, until it reach, reaches the proper temperature um, and then so we can run this, and right now the water level is too low, so it should fill it up to the proper height once this runs. Okay, so there's the water's pumping. Yep. And it stopped. And then, yeah, about there is right where, right where we're at. So yeah. it stopped there, and here, we have a spot for a user to input their ideal temperature they would like in the container okay. in Celsius. So I'm gonna say if they want it to be like a cooler temperature, um, this should turn on the heating pads. And we have a little LED indicator because the heating pads, it's kind of hard to tell when they're on or off. Yeah, the, sure. The LED up there indicates that the heating pads are on. Okay. If I want it to be a warm or warmer temperature, oh wait, oops. So yeah, that should turn on the heating pads. Yeah. Um, let's just set it here. Uh, do you, is it printing out the temperature? Uh, no, it is not printing out the temperature. But yeah, so now if we want it to be cooler, it'll yeah. turn on these fans and the fans will... Oh, I can feel them blowing. Yep, yeah, and then yeah. you can see the heating pad has turned off, as indicated by the LED. Right. So yeah, that is all controlled through here. Um, through user input and then once it gets up to the proper temperature it should turn everything off but yeah wow mm -hmm. so there's a bunch of sensors and a bunch of actuators here yes all communicating back ultimately to the rp2040 yep so so each of these fans electrically they look like dc motors right yeah. mm -hmm. um so can you describe did, did you have to add any circuits or, or what was the circuitry that you prototyped in order to control these fans? Um, so for the fans and heating pad, we made two motor control circuits. Um, <coughs> this side is controlling the fans and this side is controlling the heating pads. Um, both of those are running off of five volts um, coming from the power source. And then for the pump we kind of built the same circuit over here um and the pump is running off of 12 volts instead of 5 volts okay um, yeah. and they have these opto isolators to isolate their circuit from the rp20 circuit so those are these little things and they allow us to control both without inducing noise for the rp20 god um, yeah so there's a motor control circuit for the fans the heating pad and the pump yep do, does that imply that both fans are controlled sort of together? Together, yes. Okay. So control the fans uh, as one unit, ideally. Yeah. Okay. Oriented to it's pull air with... in and then push it out. Is that the idea? or to, to pull, just push air? It pulls in. air in. Yeah. Cool air in. And then okay. same with both heating pads are controlled by just one circuit. So okay. Yeah, it can be considered as one unit. Gotcha. So adding heat into the it's, yeah, adding heat in. And then. The um, from a sensor's perspective, there's this ultrasonic sensor. Yep. Can you describe the communication mechanism with that? Yeah, so the, uh, the ultrasonic <laughs> communicates um, 
through the trigger and an echo, which both connect to a pin. So okay. our, what, how our uh, RP20 communicates with it is it sends out a signal through the, tri uh, through the tr trigger, uh -huh. which then the ultrasonic sends out a audio signal, receives it back, and then returns as like the echo. And so it, uh, or it calculates how far it is based off the time it takes for that audio signal to leave and then come back. And then you can then read it from from that uh, gotcha. using those, those two signals. Gotcha. Yeah. And then how does the temperature sensor communicate with the microcontroller? Um, so that is the uh, one wire temperature um, thermometer. And up here we have a power and ground coming off of the RP2040 and then um, a wire going into a GPIO port. Uh -huh. um, and then through some libraries that we found online and are working with, it is communicating the temperature just through the singular GPIO pin. One wire, yeah. Very nice. How hard was it to get the one wire running? Um, so we, Hunter helped us find some example code online for the temperature sensor, and I believe it uses uh, ROM ports um, to communicate. I think it was like eight bits. Yeah. Um, it, it did take a bit of like searching online and there's a whole bunch out. of stuff that has to go with that one wire. Yeah. There is, yeah, a lot of. There was a, it was a PIO example, right? Yeah. Yes. That, yeah so there was a PIO uh, implementation and there were nice. example repositories that nice. did this. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, and then um, you just add your plants in here. And, then and it'll, they'll be automatically maintained. Yeah. How cool. There, yeah. So ultrasonic, temperature, two fans, heating pad and, pump. and a pump and then for future like developments there's these sensors that can detect nutrient levels in the water okay um, and so the idea with that is we could add that also in the water this and then so that's yeah it can detect it's called a tds which is stands for total dissolved solids um and yeah so it just detects these little wires how and interesting yeah you could put it in here add another pump that would have very like concentrated oh. nutrient water and then it could detect if it's too concentrated or not concentrated enough add either more water or more nutrients to to the water and wow then keep it at a nice balance yeah this also would run off of the one wire yeah okay one, one wire program. gotcha yeah okay. but yeah really cool yeah. thank you that's awesome a lot of fabrication work in this <laughs> yeah. oh yeah mm -hmm.